Hi everyone, welcome to the heart of reliability, where we break reliability down to the basics. Because after all, anything that's not built on a strong foundation will eventually crumble. I'm Nancy Regan and welcome to episode three of the Heart of Reliability. Today, we are going to talk about preventive maintenance. Specifically, we're going to talk about what preventive maintenance is, what two things determine whether or not you assign a preventive maintenance task, and number three, one of the biggest pitfalls that organizations often fall into when defining intervals for preventive maintenance tasks. Okay, let's get down to it. What is preventive maintenance? Well, technically, preventive maintenance is a scheduled overhaul, or another word for that is a scheduled restoration, or a scheduled replacement task. Now, that term preventive maintenance within our industry is used a lot to define proactive maintenance in general. But technically speaking, preventive maintenance only encompasses scheduled restorations and scheduled replacements. So that's the topic of this episode today. Let's talk about the two things that dictate whether or not you do a preventive maintenance task. And that is, number one, you have to identify if doing the preventive maintenance task is technically the right thing to do. And number two, is it worth it? Now let's explore that first topic. Is it the right thing to do? Now in episodes one and two, I talked about my 2014 Subaru Forester, and I'd like to go back there to illustrate this point. Now let's start by identifying and talking about a failure pattern. Now, if you're, if, you're, if you're listening to this podcast and not watching it, what I'm doing is I'm drawing a failure pattern. Now, imagine we have um, an X and a Y axis, where the X axis is age, and that age can be... Um, calculated in any number of units. That could be calendar time, it could be operating hours, it could be miles or cycles. It doesn't matter what it is. That's the x-axis. Now imagine that the y-axis is the conditional probability of failure. So the whole point about preventive maintenance is that we take action before failure occurs, but we do it on a specified interval. Now, anytime we do maintenance, we are managing a particular failure mode. So in this example, using my 2014 Subaru Forester, let's say that my failure mode is engine oil deteriorates due to normal use. Engine oil deteriorates due to normal use, right? I mean, if I have my oil replaced today, I know that after a certain period of time, additives are going to be depleted, properties are going to break down, and if I continue to drive, the oil is not going to be able to lubricate my internal engine components properly. And over time, that's going to do damage to my engine, and that's not going to be good, right? Okay, so if we, if we look at this failure pattern, and if we start right um, at the point, the first point on the y-axis, we can see that there is a constant probability of failure. In other words, there's a straight line, right? So if you're just listening, there's a straight line which means that my oil is good to go until I get to, and for this interval, for me and for my 2014 Subaru Forester, this interval is 7,500 miles. 
So I know that if I drive to 7,500 miles, if I keep driving after that, the probability that my oil is going to fail, assuming it makes it to 7,500 miles, starts to drastically increase. And that's where, if you're listening on this curve, imagine we see the line steadily going up, 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 up. This is what governs whether or not you do a preventive maintenance task, right? So this interval from the point where I put new oil into my engine, right, to the until it gets to 7,500 miles, this is called the useful life, right? My oil has a useful life. Now, I'm not talking about an average life. I'm talking about the useful life. There's a big difference between the two. We'll get there, but let's stick with this right now. So one of the technical criteria, one of two of the criteria for assigning a preventive maintenance task is, does it have a useful life? In other words, is there an identifiable wear out age? Well, in my 2014 Subaru Forester engine oil, there is. I know it's 7,500 miles. So if I go beyond this point, I know that my oil is going to break down. So I take action, and what that action is, is that at 7,500 miles, I change the oil. And that brings me back to the beginning of my failure curve where my oil is good to go. Now that brings us to one of the biggest pitfalls when it comes to assigning maintenance tasks, any maintenance tasks. But today we're talking about preventive maintenance tasks, and that is this. Four letters. MTBF. Or in other words, mean time between failure. See, an MTBF is an average, right? It is an average by definition. And an average by definition means that some failures will occur before that average life and some failures will occur after that average life. That's the definition of average. So, to assign maintenance intervals based on an MTBF or a mean time between failure or an average makes absolutely no technical sense at all. So, when you are assigning preventive maintenance tasks, whether it is a scheduled replacement or a scheduled overhaul, it is absolutely vital that you identify what that useful life is. So the thing about preventive maintenance tasks, about scheduled restorations and scheduled replacement tasks, is that they are done regardless of the item's condition at the time, right? When I bring my Subaru into, when I bring my Forester into Subaru every 7,500 miles, they don't do oil analysis on it. They, they, they change the oil. They don't check it first. And that's the nature of preventive maintenance tasks, right? It's one of the most simple kinds of maintenance tasks um, to understand the theory, so to speak, behind it and to actually assign it. So there it is. You do it regardless of the condition at the time. Now, as responsible custodians, if we're going to assign a preventive maintenance task, the other thing we have to consider is, is it worth doing? Because just because something has a useful life, it doesn't necessarily mean that we should do the maintenance task. We have to figure out if it's worth doing or not. Now, if something does, we know it has a useful life and it has safety consequences or environmental consequences, that's a no-brainer. We don't need any kind of an analysis to decide if it's worth doing or not. We absolutely um, need to do it. If doing it at that interval does reduce the risk of failure to an acceptable level to the organization. 
but what if it just has economic consequences, right? Now let's go back to the example of my, my uh, engine oil. So if I bring my engine, if I bring my car in to have the oil changed every 7,500 miles, that means I'm bringing it in, say, roughly twice a year. And let's say it costs me $50 to have the oil changed. So over a period of one year, it's going to cost me about $100. And over a period of 10 years, it's going to cost me $1,000 to have the oil changed. Is it worth it? Let's say I never change the oil. Maybe I just top it up every so often, right? When the light comes on, I just top it up. Well, over time, we know what's going to happen. That's going to cause internal damage on my engine components. They are going to wear abnormally, and eventually it's going to cause significant damage to my engine. Now, when that happens, it's definitely going to happen in before that 10-year period, right? What's going to happen is I'm probably... I'm going to have to have some serious repairs on the engine, or worst case, have the engine replaced. Now, how much is that going to cost? That's going to cost thousands, right? $5,000 plus, not to mention the inconvenience of now not having my car. Now I'm going to have to pay for a rental car, and it's going to be a hassle to have it done, right? So it's going to cost me way more, it, it, let's say it's going to cost me at least $5,000, plus it's going to be a big headache. So, is it worth doing $1,000 over 10 years, or $5,000 plus in repairs, plus a big pain in the butt, because I, I have to have the repairs done. So in this scenario, it is obviously worth doing. Generally speaking, when it comes to preventive maintenance, it does apply to simple items, items that come into, the, into direct contact with a product, like, for example, engine oil and filters and structure, right? So that's when we can apply this philosophy of a useful life and doing a maintenance task regardless of the condition at the time. So there you have it. We have established what it means that it is technically the right thing to do, a scheduled replacement task, and if it's worth doing. And we've talked about one of the biggest pitfalls when it comes to preventive maintenance, and that is mean time between failure. MTBF can be used to determine if it's worth doing a maintenance task or not but it has absolutely nothing to do with how often a preventive maintenance task is done. What dictates how often we do a preventive maintenance task is the useful life. How long is something going to last until the conditional probability of failure starts to drastically increase? See, that's the difference between probability of failure and conditional probability of failure. If we look at our curve again, right, what we say is when it comes to my engine oil, on the condition that it reaches 7,500 miles, now the probability of failure starts to drastically increase. See, that's the conditional probability of failure. It's on the condition that it reaches a certain point. Now, you may have some preventive maintenance tasks um, in your maintenance plan, right? Maybe you change oil filters on a scheduled basis. Maybe you change air filters on a scheduled basis. Now, generally speaking, those items generally do have a useful life. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't do condition-based maintenance on them. And we're going to talk about condition-based maintenance in episode four of The Heart of Reliability, which is the very next episode. So if you loved this one, stay tuned for the next one. But when it comes to preventive maintenance, scheduled replacements, and scheduled restoration tasks, what matters, what dictates the interval, is the useful life. In other words, how long will it last 
until we know failure is going to occur. So there you have it. That is preventive maintenance in a nutshell. Those are the basics of preventive maintenance and that's what we're all about here at the heart of reliability is getting down to the basics because when we understand the basics when it comes to anything as human beings when we've got that firm foundation then we're able to build on it. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the heart of reliability. I look forward to welcoming you back to the next one. And the next one, episode four, is going to be all about condition-based things. I'm Nancy Regan. Thank you for watching.